Craig Stanley with the Cubs Car Podcast. This is Thursday night, the night that Monterey kicks off. I am at Arms Sotheby's Thursday night sale, the Ferrari Barn Find Sale. Incredible stuff happening tonight. So if you're listening to this Thursday morning, please go to armsotheby's.com, hit the live stream button. Probably around 9, 9.30 Eastern time, there will be a massive announcement that will be shockwaves. Be sure to stay tuned for Friday. Check out my YouTube channel. I will upload about 25 incredible, fun, short videos that you need to check out. It is an historical announcement that's happening tonight, and I do not want you to miss this. So if you are in Monterey and you're listening to this, please find me. I will be at Arms Sotheby's bid spotting Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. I will be at the Quail on Friday. And then on Saturday, I will be judging at Concorso Italiano. I'm judging the Dinos. And then I'm staying for the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, staying on the West Coast for a little while, and then I will be judging a week from the following Monday at Ferrari's annual experience. If you want to know more about that, please go back a couple of weeks uh, to when I interviewed uh, some folks about the Ferrari annual experience and check that out. It's an incredible event. I will be out there. If you're going to be out there, please join me now like i said there'll be live streaming tonight thursday night you can get, either go to armsotheby's.com you'll want to see it or you can go to my youtube channel and watch it i hope to live stream this historic event as it happens all right so let's get started here uh for fun i just know that at arms sotheby's monterey sale there's a lot of incredible ferraris there's a 250 lm there's a pro drive marinello uh, there's a Michael Schumacher F1, some really incredible cars. So I thought it would be fun to dive into the most incredible Ferrari ever built, the 250 GTO. So here are quite a few facts. I believe I have about 16 facts, 15, yeah, 16 facts I would like to cover with you as it relates to the iconic Ferrari GTO. Now, just to be clear, there's been a couple generations of Ferrari GTOs. I am talking about the very first most iconic generation, 1962 to 1964. There was the one, 1986 or so, the 288 GTO. Then we had the 599 GTO. So there's been a couple different generations. I guess that's one of the fun facts is the fact there's there's been three different versions of the GTO, but I'm talking about the original one. All right, this first part is from Ferrari.com. The 250 GTO model was the pinnacle of development for the 250 series gt in competition form while still remaining a road car it made its public debut at the annual preseason ferrari press conference in january of 1962 and was the only front engine model on display with its sport racing counterparts all having a mid-engine configuration now from top speed simply put the ferrari 250 gto is legendary and to many it is the most iconic sports car of all time it seemingly has everything. It's strikingly beautiful, it's mighty fast, it's rare, and it is an all-conquering world champion. When sitting down and analyzing everything that the 250 GTO is, it is no hard task to figure out why so many car enthusiasts regard it as the holy grail and why some people are willing to spend exorbitant sums to purchase a real and authentic GTO. Now, this is from RM Sotheby's description. Back when they sold the only GTO to sell at a public auction, chassis number 3413 at Monterey in 2018, that sold for around $48 million. Never again would the factory develop and build a so-called production GT car purely for the sake of racing. The, the 250 GTO's rise was prompted by the creation of a, of a new international championship for GT manufacturers in 1962 for which the 250 short wheelbase Berlinetta was deemed to be insufficient. Longtime Ferrari engineer Giotto Bizzarini knew that a fresh model would be required to remain competitive with the latest machines from Aston Martin, Jaguar, and Shelby American. The short wheelbase front profile was too oblique to exceed 155 miles per hour. The front end lifted at high speeds, and the rear dimensions could not accommodate the, the ever-widening tires. For the first time in history, Ferrari utilized a wind tunnel to test new coachwork, which eventually featured an extended lower nose, a steeper windshield to reduce drag while maximizing downforce. The hood profile was lower than its predecessors, in part because the new Tipo 
539-62 comp chassis allow for the engine to be mounted closer to the ground to regain full homologation eligibility. The new car retained General 250 GT chassis dimensions and the 3-liter short block Colombo V12. That's really fascinating because you'll hear in a second, this was quite a controversial evolution of the 250 GT chassis and original design configuration. Fact number one, technically I guess fact number two, there were 39 GTOs. Now stay with me here because a lot of you have probably heard there were 36 GTOs. All right, from 1962 to 1964, Ferrari produced 36 250 GTOs. Now 33 of these were Series 1 cars and three Series 2 cars. The three Series 2 250 GTOs were produced in 1964 and came with a different design plus an upgraded chassis and engine. In my mind, they're not as beautiful. They're just as iconic, but they're not quite as beautiful. At some point in 1964, three of the original Series 1 250 GTOs were taken back to the factory and rebodied as Series 2 models. This, is, this includes the one I mentioned before that arm stuff to be sold for $48 million in 2018. I believe that was actually the third GTO ever built, but again, it was rebodied in 1964. All right, Ferrari also produced a car called the 330LM that had the same exact body and chassis as the 250 GTO, but a different engine. A total of three thir 330 GTOs were produced, but the first 330 was scrapped by the factory to build the second one, so there are technically only two 330 GTOs left in the world. So this is a car that technically started life as a 330LM, but it has the body of a GTO. It looks like a GTO, but it has a larger engine. So if you add it all up, 39 cars were made that would look nearly identical to what we think of as a Ferrari 250 GTO. Since one of the 330s was taken apart by the factory, those 38 GTOs today consist of 30 Series 1 cars, 3 Series 2 cars, 3 Series 1 cars that were rebodied as Series 2 cars, and two 330 GTOs. All right, fact number two, the 250 and 330 GTO designations denote the displacement in cubic centimeters of each of its cylinders. So the cylinders were like 250 centimeters and 330 centimeters so you know a little bit of confusion there if you're talking about the three liter or the four liter the three liter is the 250 and the four liter is the 330. gto stands for gran turismo amalgado italian for grand touring homologated all right fact number three there was one gto with two engines so chassis number 3765 began as one of the 330 gto's but the 4-liter engine was replaced by the factory with a 3-liter engine in 1963. The replacement engine had Providence in, uh, in another car before it was crashed by the likes of Phil Hill. All right, fact number four. GTOs had trouble staying cool. All of the examples produced, apart from the 1964 body cars, had three removable D-shaped panels, probably the most iconic shot of of a GTO are those D-shaped panels retained by quarter turn fasteners on the upper face of the nose for increased radiator air throughput. The pattern being repeated with three similar uncovered openings on the underside of the nose panel. Some were enlarged during a race to help with cooling, most notably chassis 3765 that I mentioned earlier during Le Mans of 1962. They literally took a hacksaw to the front end of the car to make sure that it stayed cool. All right, from supercars.net, fact number five, the GTOs produced over 100 horsepower per liter. Now think about that, that is a really big deal. I believe the modern cars didn't exceed 100 horsepower per liter until the Honda S2000 came out. Now for the GTO, it had 102 horsepower per liter, three liters with 300 horsepower. Fact number six, they came without common instruments or accessories. Now this is from topspeed.com. The Ferrari 250 GTO is a real driver's car, lacking any sort of driver aid or convenience feature. This is only down to one reason, which is a great part of the mythos surrounding the 250 GTO, that it was designed to dominate the racetrack. 
All of the luxury interiors common in road-going Ferraris were stripped, including the leather upholstery roof headliner and carpeting. Rather, the car had cloth-wrapped seats, a stripped-out door panel, and the tubular space frame of the chassis was exposed. The metal gate that displayed the shift pattern began as a weight-saving measure in the 250 GTO. The fact that this, is, this became a Ferrari tradition only speaks to the impact of this vehicle. They did not have speedometers, odometers, no carpet. It was a bare-bones race car. Fact number seven, only three GTOs had the center power bulge on the hood. Now, this was reserved strictly for the four-liter cars for clearance. And of those four-liter cars, only two of them still exist. Fact number eight, Enzo had to prove ownership of a 250 GTO. After the 1962 press conference, a car like the GTO was in high demand, but Ferrari reserved them only for the top drivers. In many regards, the 250 GTO was deemed too dangerous for most drivers by Ferrari and his team. Now, fact number nine, the Ferrari GTOs were unbeatable. With the GTO, Ferrari completely decimated the opposition in the first year of competition and scored maximum points in the 1962 Division III Championship for sports cars over two liters. Ferrari again took the Division III Championship in both 1963 and 1964. By the end of the 1964 season, Shelby led Daytona Cobras were proving their worth, and for the first time, GTOs were beating around Le Mans and Sebring. During the fifth round at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, GTOs played second and third overall behind the winning Ferrari 330 TRI-LM. This was a remarkable result and proved that the GTO could beat many cars in the prototype category. By the end of the season, Jaguar, Aston Martin, and Chevrolet tried to convince the governing body that the GTO was not a GT car. However, Appendix J, Section 254 stated that any modifications introduced after homologation did not disqualify the car if they were a normal evolution of the type. Since the GTO was an evolution of the largely produced 250 GT road car, it was declared legal. Key point here, although the five-speed gearbox and dry sump lubrication were never, never factory road car options. So a little bit of a loophole there that they got around. All right, fact number 10. There were actually three GTOs built in 1965, kind of. All right, stay with me here. Beyond 1964, the GTO was stretching its potential. Ferrari was unable to homologate their rear engine 250 LM and instead developed a competition version of the 275 GTB, which was really a 1965 GTO. These developments left the hat trick of the Division III championships to forever highlight the end of Ferrari's 250 GT series. Now, Arm Sotheby sold one of these back in, I think, 2014 for an insane amount, about $24 million. And this is how they started off the description. Few motor cars in the world possess such intrinsic desirability that their availability at auction sends shockwaves through the community of automotive enthusiasts around the world. Fewer still are so exceptionally rare, fast, and achingly beautiful that they attain legendary status. These select few motor cars at the highest point on the capstone of the collector car pyramid represent the benchmark from which all superlatives in automotive history are born. They are quite inarguably the most important cars in the world. Now, of those three, only one officially raced and it finished third at Le Mans. It is known as the $100 million Ferrari. Now, ironically, it is yellow and it's down at the Ferrari collection at the Swap Shop down in Fort Lauderdale. Fort La All right, fact number 12, the GTO power to weight ratio was crazy at 7.1 pounds per horsepower. Really insane when you think about the era. Just for... To put it in context for today, the 2020 Subaru WXSTI had 11.3 pounds per horsepower. GTO was at 7.1. 2020 Honda Civic Type R, 10.3. 2018 Maserati Gran Turismo Sport, 9 horsepower per pound. 2020 Bentley, Bentley Continental GT W12, so the 12 cylinder was 7.9. And then one that's very, very close, but just under 2020 BMW M8 competition and the 2021 Porsche 911 Turbo S at just under 7 pounds per horsepower, 6.96, which is insane. Porsche 911 Turbo S is pretty much the same as a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO. 
All right, fact number 11, the GTO's got horrible gas mileage. The three liters got 9.4 miles per gallon. <laughs> All right, fact number 12, the GTO was once the most expensive car ever sold at a public auction. A 1962 250 GTO was purchased for $48.4 million at Arm Sotheby's auction back in 2018, making it at the time the most expensive car bought at an auction that has since been eclipsed by the Mercedes-Benz Uhlenhaut Coupe that sold for $142 million last year in 2022. Think about that. The Uhlenhaut Coupe's initial bid was $50 million, which would have been a record right then, and it went to $142 million. These insane sums do not seem so outlandish when discussing the Ferrari 250 GTO as one fetched the even heftier price tag of $70 million at a private sale. Now that's the McNeil, the guy from WeatherTech. He bought it a number of years ago. Private sale, I heard it was $67, 000, $67 million, not $70 million, but that's not that big of a difference. All right, fact number 13, the 250 GTO had controversial beginnings, as I kind of alluded to before. The 250 GTO began its life and racing career in quite a controversial manner. The regulations of Group 3 GT Racing homologation, which the Ferrari 250 GTO was developed for, for required 100 road-going units to be produced. Ferrari did not play by these rules. Only 36 road-going 250 GTO examples were made. Three with 33 with the Series 1 bodywork and three with the Series 2 bodywork. The controversial start did not stop the G250 GTO from dominating Group 3. All right, a few more here. Fact 14, all 250 GTOs built exist even today. So all of them, Series 1s, Series 2s, exist today. Uh, the three 330 GTOs, only two of those three exist. So of the total 39 GTOs, 38 of them exist today. The owners of the 250 GTOs are elite Ferrari enthusiasts like Nick Mason, a Pink Floyd drummer who got his GTO thanks to the sales of the album The Dark Side of the Moon. Fact number 15, the GTO was an amazing investment. In 1962, a brand new factory fresh 250 GTO could set someone back $18,000, which would be around $180,000 when adjusted for inflation. But even thinking about that, $18,000, that was a ton of money. That's back in the day when a Corvette was probably around $3,000. Many enthusiasts argue that the value of the 250 GTO cannot be measured in mere money. This is due to its rarity and its legendary status as the world racing champion race car for a legendary manufacturer like Ferrari. I would argue that the GTOs now are $70 million on the low side. All right. The last fact is every GTO was different. Due to the hand-built nature of the vehicle, no 250 GTOs were the same. The bodies were made from aluminum, which was beaten and contained differences from the cosmetic to more mechanical ones. I actually was inspecting a 250 GTO or checking it out, and the owner told me that the windows were actually different. If you took the plexiglass windows out of the driver's side, they would not fit and the passenger side that would be about a quarter inch off because the openings were that different between the two doors and the two windows so that is it for today thanks for joining me thanks for joining me this week please check out all the exciting stuff that's happening on the collector car podcast in the auction world in the ferrari world check out my youtube channel a lot of cool stuff happening so please share this with your friends if you want the insider view to some historic stuff that is happening right now.